So welcome everyone. This is the Urban Forestry Commission meeting, May 18th, 2022. Um, the uh, public comment period, there is no one here from the public. So we can delve right into the review and approve of the minutes of 4-6-2022, which seemed like a long time ago. Um, so you should all have them take your time yeah, to read them. Let me know when you're ready to uh, move or if you have any comments, please. This is just a nitpicky thing, but under the um, section on the STO, on page two, um, the second bullet up from the top, up from the bottom on page two, um, Rob expressed the point that the amount of carbon is a service that a tree provides. I think it should say the amount of carbon produced is a service that a tree provides or something like that. The amount of carbon sequestered. <laughs> yeah. Or, or just made it, I don't know what Rob exactly said because it's in quotation marks, but it's to the, it should be like carbon sequestration is a service that a tree provides. Oh, we can we can ask him because here he is. Oh, good. <laughs> he remembers what he said back then. I I would hope so, but it does make sense, Molly. Because yeah. yeah. Welcome, Rob. We're uh, we're you're on mute, buddy. I'm a little late. I was clicking on the wrong buttons. I went to Google Meet or something. Mm. Uh, we are we're live. I st we started the meeting already, so we're uh, at the point of reviewing the minutes. Okay. And Molly had a question for you um, on a comment in the minutes. Molly, just go ahead and ask him. I don't. Know yeah, that. Um, Rob, if you want to just pull up the minutes, and then I'll tell you. Okay. I did read them recently. It's a minor little thing i just think it's yep the wording so on the section on the sto on page two um tell me when you're on page two of the minutes yes okay why don't you go ahead with something else while i get there okay okay i'll be right there mm -hmm. um, um right deb so one other second thing on the um minutes i don't know if this was what we actually said but when the next meeting was going to be um, cause we didn't have a meeting on May 4th. I it's know. Just, okay. Yeah. What it was said during the okay. meeting that, that that's why I left it in there. I was going to take it out and then okay. I can, I can remove, should I remove that? No, one no. Sentence? If that's when we thought it was going to be at the time, we should leave it then. Okay. I couldn't remember what we said back then. And the other thing, um, is for some reason, the symbol for, um, section didn't carry over in the ordinances. It mm. says it shows a bracket for bracket. Um, so I did change that to the section symbol, mm. um, and I don't know why it didn't carry through the document, but hmm. technology. Oh, yeah, yeah. I, I I made it as a, a quick link, and it just didn't I see. Work, I guess. Ah, oh, that's what that is. Okay. Okay, so I see Molly. What you were, if it's talking about, yeah, it should say. Yeah. The, the amount of carbon is one of several services that a tree provides. Would you be okay with saying carbon, carbon sequestration is a service that a tree provides? It's a little clearer. Mm. Yeah. Okay, got that Deb? Yes, thank you. Other than that, I don't remember all the specific little things we said about the STO. I couldn't exactly verify all those things, but <laughs> I assume Rich put them all into the revised document. Well, that's we will discuss that. And no, I did not. I realized, I, I, so I apologize. The draft of the STO, I know we're not talking about it, but the draft of the STO was stuck in my draft box. That's why you got it just recently, like today, I was full, I was, that was ready on Monday. So my complete apologies, but there is a little missing piece um, 
that is in the minutes that is supposed to go into the SDO draft. We'll discuss that one when we get there. Okay. So is, is the version that I read, the one that Molly sent, made corrections to, is that the corrected latest one or is that an old one? Um, that is, so I sent one today at three o'clock. That is the last version that we had from our last meeting. Okay, and Molly, you sent a, a, a version of that, right? Yes, yes. Oh. That's the version I read. So that's pretty much the right one. I the guess. same length. It's the same, all the same language, except really Molly just moved a few things around and there is some yes. grammatical corrections. But let's, right. okay. if folks are done with the minutes, is everyone done with the minutes? Mm -hmm. Marilyn? Yeah. Okay. Um, Jen, you're good. Sue? Yep. Okay. So could I get a motion to uh, move the minutes as amended? I'll make a motion to move the minutes as amended. So Lofthouse. Second, please. I'll second, Molly. Molly seconds, okay. All right, any comments? Any discussion, none. Okay, uh, Deb, can you do a roll call, please? Sorry, Rich. Uh, aye. Jen. Yes. Molly. Yes. Marilyn. Yes. Susan. Yes. David. Yes. Rob. Yes. Thank you. Okay. Um, thank you, everyone. So chair report, uh, tree warden report. I don't really have much to report. Um, most of the stuff that I would talk about would be, I didn't even actually put this on here. Oh, huh, interesting. Um, would be basically our Arbor Day planting, et cetera. I mean, that's kind of where we, we concentrated heavily. So we've planted roughly um, 107 trees as of today, since April 9th, um, which gives us a grand total um, since 2015 of 1,804. So we're, mm -hmm. we will surpass 2,000 um, this fall. Um, we planted, uh, you know, as you know, 30 trees, uh, we planted, let's see, our last meeting was the April 4th. So yeah, we planted a, We planted the Greenleaf Project with success with the Rotary Club. We planted the two schools with success where we planted 30, 31 trees. Um, we then planted on Arbor Day itself, Arbor Day proper at Arcanum Field, we planted 19 trees. Uh, and then we, we continued our plantings of um, Monday, uh, sorry, Wednesdays and Saturdays, uh, with the exception of last Saturday was just too hot, so we didn't plant last Saturday. Um, and then we gave away, uh, Sue, you can chime in on this, but I think 600, the 600 whips. Yeah, we, yes. The majority of them away, with the exception of we had a, a, late, uh, a late order show up on Friday on Arbor Day. And uh, <laughs> Sue took them and actually distributed them from her house the following Friday from Arbor Day. Mm. So everything that we said we we're going to do, we did. And we got some, uh, we got some nice. The mayor came out and planted on Arbor Day with us, so she came to our Canaan Field and spent about an hour and a half. Um, the volunteers uh, were phenomenal. There were volunteers, obviously the the Tree Northampton standby volunteers that are always there. Uh, we had the uh, Chinese Immersion Charter School was there, uh, um, and uh, we had a really great day. We did it. We got a lot of we got a lot of work done in a short period of time. Hmm. And there was a nice I, press. There yeah, was, can I was going to butt in and say that? <laughs> Go yeah. ahead. Yep. There, there was some nice. There was some wonderful press, and then what rolled out of that is that I ended up going to a Rotary Club luncheon on the 9th of May, and I gave them a, an hour long presentation about our uh, planting program, our whole urban forestry initiative basically, but talk specifically about the existing planting program we have, including the setbacks. So they, and they presented me with a, uh, which I'll send you a picture, a check uh, for one of those big paper checks, you know, the giant, like you want oh, yeah. a lottery, right? <laughs> for $670 in donations, which is gonna go as a credit towards Amherst Nursery for more tree planting purchases. And, Fabulous. And they're not done. They, they said they had more to collect. So they'll probably give us the credit in the fall. And can I butt in a little bit? Sure. Yeah, please. Um, 
for the record, um, Rep. Lindsay Sabadosa uh, returned as she has for years to the Tree Whip giveaway. She's incredibly dynamic, working with the public and enthusiastic. It's always great to have her. Also, at the um, school project, we had um, a couple more counselors, Stanley Moulton, Ward 1. Mm -hmm. um, we had Rachel Maori. Um, I forget which word she is. Seven, seven. Seven, thank you. And were there any other officials who participated? I just want to publicly acknowledge well, any officials. Yes, um, LaBarge, Councilor LaBarge. Oh, yes, I planted with her. Thank right. you. Word five. No, yeah. six. Yeah. Which is all just, you know, and really also, wonderful to have um, these. Gwen Agner was there too. School, and Gwen Agner from school, school committee. Former principal, yeah. So it was it was uh it was a great it was a great month. I think I think next year we should start planting in in uh, February. <laughs> <laughs> All there, right. There seems there seems to be no more spring. Oh, oh boy. Good. So um, but I, I definitely think uh, as much as I, from an operational standpoint, was kind of bemoaning starting so early in April. I think actually it paid off, mm -hmm. and I think that if uh, the ground is not frozen. Uh, and we can viably give the trees water and the water tanks don't freeze, we might consider shifting with the with our new mm. weather pattern we have, our new seasonal mm. weather pattern. I got to say, I thought it was going to be a muddy mess. Yeah, it, it, it didn't really it didn't really turn out that way. It actually worked out really well. Yeah. Um, and uh, so I, I hats off to all of you. Thank you for everyone's help and participation. Um, I couldn't do it without Thank you. Thank you for stretching, Rich. I know it was a huge lift for you and your team. Your, yeah, um, but, I, but I mean, you know, I, I, I think it really paid off um, because we ended up um, capturing a whole nother group of folks um, that have a volunteer effort, right. not necessarily, um, you know, with their hands in the mud, um, but actually the ability to reach out to businesses uh, for fundraising. Uh, an awareness of our planting initiative and and just continue to making it making it more sustainable more right. sustainable than it already is i mean i i don't know how much more we can stretch sustainability wise but you know the more people that we partner with i think um, that was the theme that i when i went to uh their luncheon that was the theme that i kind of said you know starting with new partners uh new community partners um that are not the you know the normal uh you know the the mayor or the city council, but I mean different organizations other than Tree Northampton. I mean the mm -hmm. immersion school, the Rotary yeah. Club, um, the environmental club at the high school. I mean we've we've partnered with a lot of different people in the last six years, and it's really paid off. So, and I'll I'll th also throw in that at the Tree Whip giveaway, um, an active member of the PTO from Leeds was there, very jealous that um, oh. they hadn't been part of the school planting. Good and rearing to go. Good, next year or the fall, who knows? Yep. Um, Rich, who did you say that donation came from? This that donation great. came, that was a donation that was collected by the Rotary Club. Oh, great. So they they will just uh, go and purchase a credit at Amherst Nursery for um, trees. We, are, we also have another standing credit for $1,500 at Amherst Nursery for damage that was incurred by two car accidents on trees we planted in the last five years. Mm. So there's another credit there for more uh, tree plantings. And we already have replaced those two trees that got ran, ran over during snowstorms. Do they give us, they give us a guarantee if something happens to the trees? Amherst nursery? Yeah. No. No, oh. it's like reparations. The person. Oh, 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 oh. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. So it's okay. like if you break a telephone pole, yeah. yes, yes. So there, uh, Bartlett Consolidated is a company that the city utilizes to actually work with the individual party that's got it tracked into the particular piece of city infrastructure, whether it's a hydrant, telephone pole. Ah. pole. I'm sorry, I didn't make that clear. I apologize. That's okay. So, I get it. Um, so that I mean, that's really about all. Oh, I the day after Arbor Day, I actually went to plant uh, in Plainfield. So I worked with Bob Milstrom, who's the tree warden in Plainfield. We planted, uh, 
we plant, I was there when they planted 12 trees, but they, they had 15 altogether. They had the bare root stock, the same trees that we received from Chestnut Ridge, a similar uh, tree stock. So I spent the day in Plainfield. So I was going there just as a volunteer. I had no intention of even talking. I was just going to dig holes and plant trees. And next thing you know, they say to me, well, you know, while you're here, can you give us a class? <laughs> <laughs> so we had a collective class and uh, I digging in Plainfield is a lot different than digging in the mm. valley. There's everything is a boulder and a rock. And mm. It's uh, everything is, I was tired when I was done. But, but again, another opportunity for myself or others in our uh, organization to reach out to other communities to try to build a bridge. I think that's important because there's a lot of uh, bridge building needs to happen outside of Northampton proper as you go west. Um, so. Thanks for going above and beyond. That's a lot of exertion. It's okay. I, it, I, I enjoy it. It gives me a lot of, uh, a lot of personal satisfaction mm -hmm. and professional personal. So, um, all right. right. Anyone have any questions? I'm a little over time. Um, all right. So I am done with my chair report. I don't have any public shade hearings that are upcoming and I don't have any meetings or anything to report on the uh, main street for everyone or the main street design. Um, so as soon as I have something, I will let you know. Okay. So our biggest piece on our agenda today is the STO final draft. And I'm saying final draft discussion. I hope it's the final one. Um, so I sent you earlier today a, um, a draft that I had cleaned up from our last meeting uh, that I had, I missed some information uh, that needed to be put in there that was a draft piece that David um, had brought in. And then um, in, this, in the same vein, I also noticed that after I sent it to you or after, I, let me rephrase this, it was prepared to go on Monday. Deb sent me the minutes to the meeting and I realized that there was a line in the, in the, on the last page that I didn't catch. So before we talk about Molly's edits, let, let's just go. Does everyone have it in front well, of you? I have a question. Is it the draft that you sent today at three o'clock different than the one you sent on the 16th at 6 p.m.? Oh, so, so you got that one. You actually, I was about to say that. I just opened that email with the agenda. Yeah. And that, Okay. Draft. There is a draft on there. All right. So. All right. So disregard, disregard the draft I sent at three o'clock because. Oh. Be, okay. So the draft that I sent on the sixteenth. My apologies. Is okay. the final draft that I revised from our last okay. meeting. Okay. So my apologies. There's so many. I'm drafts. sorry too, Rich. I didn't see it before. That's okay. I was checking with Sue on my ride back from Boston today to make sure that everything, everyone, she had seen everything and. Can we screen share so I get sure. the right one? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, let me just do a uh, screen. Because I could spend a little time messing around. And I don't okay. think we need to spend so, that time. Okay, let's share. All right, so you can see. Mm -hmm. Do I need to make it larger for people? Um, larger is better. A little, a little bit, yeah. Yeah, okay. That's good. All right. So the part that I, so I did a little editing on some grammatical things. Then Molly caught a few other grammatical things, which we'll go over in her draft in a minute. So this draft, as I'm scrolling through here, I just want to make sure this is basically everything right here. Okay. So this section right here, section A, top of the page, um, urban forests mitigate air pollution, lower ambient temperatures, which result in reduced energy use for cooling buildings. They reduce buildings. And that's where Molly, you said make a period, correct? Um, yes. Okay. So I'm going to edit this. I'm going to edit this right in front oh, of you. Oh, great. Okay. Perfect. Okay. okay. All right. So period, capital then, they. They, and then reduce instead of reducing. Reduce stormwater runoff. From our runoff yep. and pollutants, reduce erosion and provide habitats. To wait, 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 provide, not providing. Provide, excuse me. Yeah. 
provide habitat to sustain populations of urban wildlife. Yes. Oops, you need an E. I'm sorry, what? Type E, where your cursor is. What? No. Provide. Hey, yep. Yep. Oh, 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 oh. Yep. They also reduce noise, enhance aesthetics, and property values. The intent of this section is to encourage the preservation and protection of trees during development and redevelopment projects that require a site plan approval, special permit, comprehensive permit, finding, or variance collectively, other, other, otherwise known as zoning relief. Mm -hmm. So David, that, that was the piece that was missing from our last discussion in April that you had um, drafted. Mm -hmm. So I just wanna make sure that you're okay with how that all looks. Uh, yes. Okay. Uh, there's, there was only um, reducing erosion and soil loss. Did that make it in there? I, I cut and pasted exactly what was in that PDF that we worked on the last time. Soil loss and erosion are kind of redundant. They're kind of the same thing. Right. Yeah, I would I think, think so too. Same. Yeah, I think it looks good then. I don't think uh, forests need, needs to be capitalized, just as a small point, but mm -hmm. urban forests. Right, right. Second sentence. Second sentence. Yeah, but they're, uh, they're, they're, consider, they're a thing. Okay. A thing that's defined? Yeah. Yep. Okay. At least that's what I recently learned anyways. <laughs> they're a thing. They're a thing that's de defined. Proper noun. <laughs> yeah. Uh, okay, so everyone's good with that. That was the one thing that was missing from the last draft that we looked at at our last meeting that we discussed. Mm -hmm. Okay, David, you're good with that. We can- Yes, thank you. All right, all right perfect. Thank you, sir. Okay, so um, I just cleaned up some stuff in here. Um, I made all the language, so I'm going to roll back up just for a second. I made all the language where it says in, so here we, <clears throat> sorry, 350 uh, dash 11.5 section one, inventory of any trees as specified in the table under um, 350 dash 12.3 B by a certified arborist who possesses a tree risk assessment qualification. So I corrected the proper professional terminology and then I went through the document and just reiterated that where it's referenced the same way. So those are the right. changes that I made from the last one. And then before we go to Molly's changes, I'm going to scroll down to the... Yes, stop for a moment, Rich, going back to the, the, in, the qualifications for doing an inventory. Yep. Did, 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 the, did the planning people object to that? I thought I saw that, that they yeah. didn't... Yes, they did, because they feel... If I remember correctly, they felt that an initial inventory could be done by anybody. Huh. And and I and I disagree with that because yes, an inventory can be done by anyone. You can give them a tape measure and you can give them a book and you tell them to identify trees. Hmm. But when you are, you know, and I think we have to put our hat on because we're going to get pushback most likely. What we have to put our hat on is that we have to look at trees as an asset. So trees are an asset, just like a fire hydrant, just like a sign, just mm -hmm. like a, a, a water main, just like a sewer catch basin. I mean, I mean a stormwater catch basin. So you're you're not gonna you're not gonna have a individual um, do an inventory and a condition rating of a fire hydrant or a sanitary sewer or a water line if they don't have some kind of professional qualification. Mm -hmm. So I really don't see any difference as they're going to have to have an in, a certified arborist at some point in the project. They might as well just get it over with in the beginning and do it correctly. Go ahead, uh, Jen. I think uh, you're right on the beam. This is a huge problem in our industry in general that, you know, because we're not certified like electricians or like plumbers, you know, there's a lot of, that's why we see volcano mulching, you know, mm -hmm. so anywhere where we can elevate the industry, I think, is helpful, and this is totally appropriate, you know? I would add that we have encountered certified arborists who have um, given, given their clients advice that we wouldn't necessarily agree with. So even if they're certified, I'm thinking of Honda. 
Yeah, and that's that, that's a that's a good that's a good example, and that does happen in the industry because you have to remember that the relationship that that Arbor has with Leah, the Honda of the dealership owner, that they're, they're the client. So if the client tells the arborist that I want the trees cut down, I want them three feet off the ground. If the arborist, you know, the arborist works for the client. So if the arborist refuses to do it, then the arborist is out of a job for that particular, you know. So and, if you're saying it can be just anybody, you don't even have that professional standard to. Well, you, you do. At have, all. You do have. If you're a certified arborist, you have a professional right. standard. But I'm saying it's an like, argument. I mean, if you don't even say right. it's a certified arborist. It, it really makes no sense to me. How can you do that? Right. It, it makes no sense to me to stand in front of the planning board with, a, with an inventory that says that you have deemed that there are 10 trees that are high risk for failure and we want to remove them so they would not count under this. Mm. Right formula. I mean, to me, I would just rather get it out of the way, and just so everyone's on the same page in the very beginning. There's no more back and yeah. forth. Um, yeah. And again, it's an asset. You know, it's it go it, same argument for the uh, re, the uh, replacing trees at the same DBH and caliber. You know, when the planning board tells an applicant that sure we're, we're going to approve your we're going to approve your application but we only want you to replace half of the fire hydrant or we only want a four foot telephone pole. They don't tell them to do that. They make sure it's replaced hundred percent, you know? So I don't see why trees should be looked at any differently because they provide ecosystem services that are great benefits constantly. Might I add a fire hydrant provides a service when it's open. Mm -hmm. A sign provides a service when someone reads it. Right. So sorry, I'm being a little facetious, but I'm just, it's, I'm getting, it's, it's irritating uh, as you can tell. Well, thank you for the clarification because I just wanted to make sure that was resolved that we're, that we're on it, even though there's an object, somewhat of an objection. Yeah, I mean, I, and I think that there will probably be objections to parts of this and we'll just oh, yeah. have to, you know, we'll have to work our way through it. But I mean, this is something that I don't think would be worth objecting to. You know, you might, they, objecting to the DBH replacement calculation might be something worthwhile objecting to, but why object to it? Something that you act, the information that you really need from someone yeah. who's a professional. So we'll just- Thank, thank you. Yes, Molly. Um, just ignore this if it's too late to bring out, but um, if, you, if you were out there doing an assessment and um, there were a bunch of Norway maples and Atlantis trees, would you take that into account for like whether they were, whether they, needed to be protected or replaced or does it matter what species it is no it, it doesn't matter because the the uh the threshold is based just on dbh of a particular deciduous or coniferous tree yeah you know i mean obviously that so that's that's a good that's a good point though because if you have a nori maple that is struggling or it has severe canopy decline um Somebody who's a certified arborist can obviously identify that, and that can be noted in the report that gets sent to the planning board. Thus, we recommend that this tree be removed because it has, you know, 10% live crown ratio versus a tree that has 85% crown ratio, which is a tree that's in good condition or almost excellent condition. Mm -hmm. So, I and if you started trying to add into a code or regulation such level of detail, it, it's it's never ending. You could say, yeah. if the trees are too close together, they're, you know, or there's all, or they're growing towards a building. They're not really as good as, you know, you know what I mean? Yeah, it's like an endless to, list of. And suddenly we'd have to add ash trees, which, you know. Yeah, right, right, right. Weren't in. Yeah. But I mean, again, that's another good example. If you have someone who's got a qualification, they can identify the ash trees and they can say, oh yes, this ash tree actually has emerald ash borer in it. Or it's it's deadly. Some, it is susceptible to emerald ash borer. Would you consider waiving the replacement requirement because this tree is going to, you know, the planning board wants us to keep this 20 inch ash, but we know in two years time, yeah. it's likely gonna be gone. 
will you waive this? Uh, and we, you know, not so we don't have to replace the whole DBH, but we will replace some of the tree. Yeah. But I mean, having that ability to do those kinds of things ahead of time is, um, I think, would be smarter. But mm -hmm. okay. Okay. So what I did is I mirrored that um, f the way that sentence is phrased throughout the whole document. Yep. Okay. Rob, that's good. You answered your that answer your question. Thank Sorry. you. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. Okay. Um, so I'm gonna go down to E. Okay. So the original, the document that I sent out on Monday night, this last sentence in this where it says replacement shall be calculated so that each inch of diameter at breast height of the removed mm -hmm. tree trees shall be replaced by equal caliper inches of replacement trees and mm -hmm. not change that. I have since, because that was something that was, we, we worked on in our last meeting. So that is now in this document. Okay. So mm -hmm. the document you have was not correct. Um, I also changed uh, D. It says replacement trees shall be non-invasive deciduous or coniferous trees as defined with the city's tree list and planting guidelines. Um, because it was repetitive, there was another there was another line in there, and I don't have it on this one. There was another line in there that talked about the tr street trees shall follow USDA hardiness zones. Blah right. blah 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 blah. Right. So I felt it was not. I mean, it, there used to be an old street tree um, ordinance in, inside the zoning code, which is no longer there. They don't follow it anymore because we use the tree list and plant the guidelines. So I just made it all one. Um, Good. And mm -hmm. that's the changes that, that I made. So anyone have any questions before I move to the document Molly sent us? No questions. Okay. I, I have just, a, I guess it's a question, but non-invasive coniferous or deciduous tree, couldn't we just omit deciduous or coniferous? What other kinds of trees are there? Hmm. That's a good question because I had a long discussion with the planning office because the, the, the problem so the original problem was is, is that back when we put in the language in regarding to the net zero buildings, um, they wanted to they wanted to basically say that coniferous trees didn't have a value, so thus they didn't need to be counted as significant mm. trees. So I mm. had a conversation. <laughs> I know Sue laughed, right? So I had a. Why don't they have a value because they? I, be, they didn't have a value because they were coniferous. <laughs> All right. You know, so, so I, you know, and I'm sure I'm kind of, I'm not telling you the whole conversation because I can't, it was like four years ago. So I did a bunch of research and I said, look, I said, coniferous trees actually sequester more carbon more quickly and have a um, less carbon, uh, less carbon output and require less energy because they are constantly, they have needles on them constantly. And so they're working year round. And I said, I, I and so I, I don't really see why we would want to eliminate a coniferous tree. And, and, I, it, and I got a little uh, bothered because I felt it was, it was more of a, a spot zoning change because there was a particular project that was going on oh. that they wanted something and I, and I pushed back and I ended up meeting with the mayor over it and then it stayed in there. So I, dog park, I think. Yeah, I would like to keep that in there just because mm. I think people yeah. I think people don't necessarily realize the value of coniferous trees in the urban landscape. Mm. Um, especially on projects that are not street tree related. Um, you know, mm. I don't think we plant enough of them. I, I would like to yeah. say, but I'm. I'll, yeah, no, that's that makes a lot of sense. The way they're you... very valuable as far as habitat goes, mm. and even though like white pines have a higher risk of you know breaking and falling, but they also have all the other positive values. Yep. Yeah. Mm. 
Uh, they do, and their their growth rate is incredible. Thus, they grow so much faster and can sequester so much carbon. Mm -hmm. Plus, not to mention, they take up uh, stormwater, you know, stormwater uh, mitigation and and the other benefits you just talked about. So, I, I I think people look at them. I don't know why they look at them that way. I wish I could plant white pines in the public right away, but I can never get away with it. Uh, it would be kind of cool. Um, people have done it, but um, so those. Those were the things that I just. And I only laugh because it's it's not funny. It's absurd. It's it's so people are just looking for any reason not to protect trees. Yes. So. And that's what we're up against. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I think things are getting worse. On another note, because of the amount of construction that's happening. Mm. So construction is happening at a breakneck pace this year. Yeah, a lot of it has to do with um, just the federal money that's become available for infrastructure projects all over the Commonwealth uh, and and the country in general. And I think that just the construction is just and it's going to continue for ten years because there's there's a trillion dollars of infrastructure money everywhere. Mm. All right, so if everyone's good with this this particular version, I will. Let me see if I can bring up Molly's. If you give me share screen, I can bring it up. All right, can you see that? That's yours, Molly. Um, oh, you're not seeing that. What are you showing? I'm showing you. This is your. Oh, right? well, then uh, it looks like the one you just did. I don't think anything changed. All right, hold on a second. Hold yeah, on. that's that's not mine. I can see the title up at the top. Okay, hold on a second. All right, let me, uh, okay, let me do, um, you want to do screen, you want to do screen share and talk about your, the, the, yeah, I'd be happy to. All right, hold on one second. Let me just get you, make a co-host. Yes. Okay. So you're, you should be able to screen share. Okay. And then you can talk about the recommended changes you made. All right. Now, are you seeing it? Uh, yeah. Yes. Yep. Okay. Um, Okay, where I made changes was this section um, D6. Um, okay, so it was confusing. The numbering system in here was confusing because there were A's, B's, ones and twos, and then A's and B's again. Um, so what I, let's see. Okay, so if you just read through this whole thing, starting from six, um, these are exceptions. So trees that are approved for removal through special permit by the planning board. Okay, here's one type of thing that could be approved by the planning board. They could grant a special permit, um, blah, 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 that um, if they determine that at least the following standards have been met. Now, I took away the number one because there is no number two. So we don't really need a number one. So the following standard is this. Trees are removed in order to create net zero buildings up to this many square feet. Um, and then this part about the square footage was down here. I thought that should go up there where you're talking about square feet um, to just clarify that whole thing. And then, so I just moved that whole paragraph up here. And then the thing is that that's the first part of the qualification but in addition to that, it also has to meet one of the next two things. So I just put, in addition to the above requirement, special permits may only be granted if one or more of the following community benefits, oops, that's supposed to say, is, is achieved. Um, and then instead of doing A and B, I just did Roman numeral one and two, So because that's a subset of, this A up here. And that's it. So basically, yeah, does that make sense to everybody? Yeah, I mean, it makes sense to me that you've explained it that way. I don't know because I remember that Carolyn, when we re, when we re, when we did this last draft, it was Molly, myself, and Todd and Carolyn. Wow. I'm Todd. sorry, Lily, Lily, Todd, myself, and Carolyn. And 
this was not originally in the initial STO in 2015. Mm. This was put in there when we did the uh, draft in 2017, maybe 2018. Mm -hmm. um, so that was added. Right. Yep. So basically that's, that actually cleared up the issue that they have uh, where the, um, uh, sort of like, for example, the uh, affordable housing unit built by Habitat that is up on a Glendale Road. Mm -hmm. So that one, that was a project that was under a site plan review. And they wanted to, they, you know, because of the type of construction that it was, there was affordable housing units for 50% or more of the units are indeed restricted for affordable housing as defined by this ordinance. So that's one example of a location where this actually worked. Well, but it has to also, the first requirement is that it has to create net zero energy buildings, right? Yes, correct. So that you have to have that plus one of the other two, not just one of the other two by itself. Well, that, so I I hope that's the way it reads because Carolyn may differ that I don't know because this stuff came from other places in the in the in the code. I think. All right. Well, that's um that's the way that it read, and I was like just trying to clarify that. So if that's not what she intended, she should check that over and see, like, um, you yeah. know, can these, can this little I and II, can those alone be a reason why there could be um, a waiver of the tree replacement? Or does it own, only those two things could happen when there's a net zero energy building? The question for Carolyn, I can't answer that question. I don't, I don't yeah. enforce this part of the ordinance. So this is just a translation, like clarifying how I read it originally. So I don't know if that's what she intended. And also, are there any other um, any other waiver possibilities besides the one that's under the rubric of the net zero energy buildings? Are there other things too? Because there weren't any other ones listed. No, this is it. Okay. This is it. So we can we can make those changes to the draft that I was messing with that I had, you know, the draft that I had on the screen before. Mm -hmm. And then I can send that all, I can, what we could do is if you wanted to, if, you know, if people have more questions and want to talk more about this, this is, um, that'd be fine. We could uh, just make a motion uh, when we're ready to, uh, to have just have me amend the original document that I was working, that was on my screen. Mm -hmm. And then I can send this back to planning and sustainability with your blessing mm -hmm. if you wanted to do that. So we don't have to bring this back to another meeting with a clean draft. Yes, I go for that. Okay. Yeah. Uh, um, before, all right, Molly, um, if you, I just want to, uh, anyone else have any questions about this part of it? Well, I just had clarification about what Molly's saying is that there's some ambiguity as to whether you have to meet all these requirements or, or just, or not. In other words, is it, it, does it have to be affordable housing and it has to result in permanently protected? No, no. Yeah. And it, it may be granted if one or more of the following community mm -hmm. benefits is achieved. This one or this one. Right. Okay, good. But that's the way that it was worded. Now, if that's what Carolyn intends, or does she mean that there would be three separate categories? This one, this one, and this one. Ah, uh. In which case, the the way that it's they're labeled, it might be easier to have them be one, two, and three, or something like well, that. Well, we don't know what that means. That that means a whole different thing. So, if she wants it to be this or this or this, that's a whole different kettle of fish than if if it's this plus either one of these. Right. And so we don't know. Right, so how are we gonna deal with that ambiguity? Right? Well, what do we want it to be? I think we should propose it the way we think it should be, I guess. Um, you know, like would affordable housing by itself be enough of a reason to um, create a waiver for tree replacement or only if, if it uses net zero energy buildings? Right. She okay. has, I was under the impression from like over the years that kind of the net zero thing was the real linchpin. Uh, but mm -hmm. that's what I remember. I don't, I don't, I, 
Yeah, we don't I know, I, I guess. I think I remember that too, Jen. So it would, it would be first you have the net zero and then... Um, then one of the other two. Yeah. We had a couple of projects that they really were going to take down some big trees, particularly like back in Lyman, those big trees, you know, there was mm. like huge trees back there. And right. Um, the older gentleman who did all the calculations got involved and uh, I don't know whatever happened there, but um, you know, that was the thing. Well, they're net zero. So, you know, yeah. So yeah, you uh, can, that's what I remember, but I, I'm with Molly, put it the way we think it should be. And, you know, if that wasn't the way she intended, then, you know, that's, you know. So the way, the way, the way that I read this in the original document is that trees are removed in order to create an, so the board may grant a special permit if after weighing the benefits of significant trees against another community benefits created as part of the project. It determines a waiver of, of tree, uh, it determines a waiver of tree replacement to be appropriate. And if at least the following standards have been met. One, trees are removed in order to create a net zero energy buildings for electric and thermal of up to 10,000 square feet and or install 10,000 square feet of ground mounted PV panels. In addition to providing one or more of the community benefits. So, mm -hmm. You have to have one or you have to have one of those A or B, which is affordable housing units where 50% are deed restricted, or B, where they provide a portion of the property for protected open space. Yes. In order to qualify that. Except they're going to be numbered I and II. Correct. But if you, which is fine, but I think the reason why they're numbered that way is because that's the way that all of the ordinance language is numbered when you no, have, but, but there's already an a they're already under this a here right but the, the thing is is that they're the parentheses are different that's how they do it so the rest of these oh. ordinance is the same way mm. so all right down to b with the standard parentheses building square footage shall apply to a single building footprint or the aggregate or, of two or more buildings in order to exercise a special permit granted under this section, applicants must present a building permit that has been issued for a specific plan showing a compliance with the net zero standard and must construct in, accord in, in accordance with the special permit with one year of the issuance of a building permit. A planning board special permit to grant a waiver from replacement within this provision is allowed only for trees necessary to remove in order to provide the solar access to the building. So uh, I'm just comparing. Um, just yeah, is that um, that stuff that's in green? Yeah. Is that supposed to be a clarification of this part up here? That's a clarification. That is a clear. That is a clarification of number of one. Yeah, not because the way that it's numbered before as a B makes it as a like an alternative to this paragraph. Which doesn't seem it is. So so A. That's why I took out the B. Yeah. There is no, yeah. This is not a separate, like this is not on the same level as this. Right, but the first one where it says the board, A. Mm -hmm. Okay, that is the that is the first subset of of six. six yeah the second subset of six is the b that is in green oh so that's a separate set that's, of conditions that's a separate that is a separate set of conditions so oh. so six is oh. the, but okay i thought that separate set of i thought that b the part that's in green is a uh finer description of this section here about the net zero, zero buildings. It, it is, but I think, and just bear with me, I'm sorry to be, I just want to read this so we do it right. Six, so six is actually under D. So D6. Yeah, yeah. They're approved for removal through, through right. by the planning board. A, the board will do blah, 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 blah. If the following standards have been met, so now they start with one. Mm -hmm. 
parentheses, A, um, I, I don't even know, I forgot the name of those types of parentheses, but, um, and then- Bracket. B, bracket, thank you. Bracket, and then B bracket, and then B in standard parentheses is, is second to A, which falls under six. So basically, it's confusing, but it makes sense to me because I read other ordinance pieces. All right, so you're saying that the, the green paragraph should not have been moved, it should have stayed as B? Yes, hmm. because under A, one in the bracket, A in the bracket, and B in the bracket all fit, all reference A in parentheses. Yeah. And B is basically explains what building square footage shall apply to single blah, 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 explains everything that is above it. I get it. Well, it doesn't make sense to me that way, but I don't know. What do other people think? So first they say what the rule is, and then B says what it applies, how it applies. Correct. So A A basically says that they, oh. they, they will waive, they will waive tree replacement oh. if the following standards have been met. So one in brackets, A in brackets, B in brackets. So they have to meet A, they have to meet one in yeah, brackets. Yeah, right. In addition to one yep. to be A or right. B in brackets or right. both. And then B in parentheses explains exactly what the nomenclature means. Building square footage shall apply oh, to the building. Okay. Footage. I was thinking that B was just under the whole category of standards to be met. No, I think it's the other way around. Okay. All right. Well, that's all right. So the brackets are just indicating a, a lower place in the hierarchy. Yeah, so B deserves the same place in the hierarchy as A. Okay. Francis, well, brackets are sub subject to hmm. A, and then all right, you know, and maybe maybe all the stuff that I changed. One. Maybe none of this needs to be changed. Then maybe the numbering is fine the way it was. Right. I think we can go with it. it okay. I don't know. Anybody else want to chime in, David? Especially with your legal mind. Well, I, I, I just had one thought. I mean, I, since the granting of a special permit effectively undermines the tree protections. Right. I mean, we could, Carolyn et al. will not like this, but we could suggest that a special permits may only be granted if the application is circulated to the Urban Forestry Commission, which has 30 days to review it or something like that, just so that somebody takes a second look at the at the proposal to see if trees can be preserved and these other objectives realized at the same time. Hmm. No, I don't That's think we're, we're the body to do it. I mean, Rich would be the person who has some authority, but 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 he doesn't have any um, credentials in terms of construction, just, you know, just the trees. Yep. And the whole reason this exception was being made had to do with the net zero energy buildings, just that specific case. Right, but aren't those going to become more and more common? Um, Good point. Yeah, but not if they're included with the affordable housing that's, that's or no, protected permanent open space. Right. And it's still, they have, still have to weigh the benefits of the trees against the other options. It doesn't mean that because they have those options that it would automatically waiver those trees. But I think it's, I think it's okay. I think it's okay too. I think, I guess we can just leave it the way it originally was. Rob and Jen, do you have any? Yeah. Well, I, I agree that it can be left the way it is. It, it, I, I've read a lot of like zoning documents and stuff. They're very hard to read, <laughs> always. <laughs> yeah, it's yeah. kind of out of my purview, so I don't want to. I I just don't. I'm not expertise enough, I think, to weigh in really. Yeah, 
Yeah, I couldn't understand the hierarchy of the brackets and the parentheses until Rich just explained it. And then it makes sense. Yeah. The parentheses. Yeah. Brackets are under it. I see. Okay, whatever. It's weird to me, but brackets that's are the way they it. do it. That's the way they do it. <laughs> um, okay. I can go with that. Molly, could you just stop your screen? Yes. Screen? Yeah. Let me go back to stop share. All right. Thank you. Yep. Right. There we go. Marilyn, what do you think of all this? <laughs> Sounds good. <laughs> <laughs> all right. Sacrificing trees for yeah. Um, okay. So housing and open space. If everyone do you want to see the document that I adjusted or do no, you no, I believe you. We already we saw it while you were screen sharing it. Okay. All right. In my opinion. Okay. Does anyone have any other comments on this draft document before we call for before someone makes a motion to Ooh. vote on this. Wow. Oh. <laughs> I know. Well, it's going to come back, though, but that's okay. It doesn't matter. We put a lot of work into this, and this is extremely important, and we're not done, and we're not going to back down either. I, but I, I do understand that this will be some kind of a negotiation. I, one thing I will tell you is that uh, um, the planning board uh, is very interested um, in... Um, Strengthening tree protection. They have had a lot of pushback from a lot of residents mm -hmm. about the different types of projects, not just the ones that are under the SDO, but other uh, by right projects, uh, infill development. Yeah. And uh, they are interested in seeing what our changes are. So once I we're done with this, I'm sending an email, um, sending a, I'm sending this to planning sustainability, but I'm also sending it to George Gohut, the chair of the planning board. So, you know, he, he wants to have an open dialogue about this with us, so which I think is great. Where does Alex fit in? Because he came to our meeting wanting to know where we were with it. You know, he was very anxious to see it. It's right in the minutes. Yeah, I will send him a copy as well. It's He's made know, that effort. It is what it's public information. It is, you yep. know, we're sharing it in a public, public open meeting. We're debating it in an open meeting. So, um, yeah. So with further ado, if no one has any other comments, I would like to entertain a motion to vote to uh, accept the STO draft as amended. I need somebody to raise their hand. Sue, you do it. <laughs> <laughs> okay. So am I doing a second or do you need the whole? I, I need someone to make a, make I a motion. Need... I make a motion that we vote to accept the significant tree ordinance as amended and discussed in this meeting. I will second. Okay. All right. Any discussion? Deb, can you do a roll call, please? Gladly. Rich? Aye. <laughs> Jen? Yes. Molly? Yes. Susan? Yes. David? Yes. Rob? Yes. Marilyn? Muted. You're muted, Marilyn. There we go. Yes. <laughs> Thank you. All right. Thank you. I feel like okay. we need to have some fireworks or something. I don't yeah, know. Nice you, uh, you know how you send someone a, uh, a boat, like a happy birthday on yeah. your phone, right? It goes, <laughs> so, all right. So we can just pretend it's happening. Okay. So I will. Just call through this one more time to make sure that everything is where it's supposed to be, and I will send this off. Um, in all thank you, yeah, no, thank you. So long, it, time. uh, Rich, in terms of the procedure, so you send yep. it to the planning and sustainability folks and and George, and what happens next? Um, they will digest it, and I'm gonna tell them that I will actually would like to meet with them in person to discuss this. Um, I think I have to think about that a little bit, but I would send. I think that's what will end up happening is that this will now become a circulated draft that will be discussed. How it's discussed, I'm not sure, because it is a public document. So, uh, you know, I suppose, you know, if George would. Another thing too is that if George is interest, interested in actually talking about this draft document 
at a planning board meeting, I'd be, I think it would be behoove us to go to planning board meeting mm. to actually talk to the planning board members directly um, about this draft document and why we are recommending the changes that we've made, et cetera. Um, you know, I think it's, I mean, the reality is, is that trees are, you know, they're getting cut down left and right. And this is just one fortunate control mechanism that we've had so far. It's just not strong enough. Um, I think there's other things that we could also now look, turn our time and attention to that might be more widespread uh, that might have a greater impact on the type of uh, uh, type of development that's going on. But I think the planning board is also, they seem to be interested in determining um, the effect that the infill development has had on the urban canopy and neighborhoods, et cetera, because of all the pushback. So I think this really comes at a good time. So I will move this forward and then I will actually have a conversation with George directly. Yeah. And I know from experience of oh, Sue, sorry. brief experience going to planning or to different meetings, it really does make a difference if people say, you know, I've been a member of the Urban Forestry Commission for this long, and we're seeing a lot of trees. There's very, very little protection of trees in the city of Northampton. You know, each of us has something we could say. We put a lot of work into this, and I think it would be a great benefit for each of us, each and every one of us, and everyone in the public who cares about this to go and stand behind us. Yeah, I don't disagree, Molly. Sorry, I first. Okay. Molly, you're on, you're on mute, Molly. Sorry about that. Okay. Is it the planning board who votes on it, or the planning department, or so, so the plan? So it'll end up happening. In my experience in the past, is that the plant, the plan, office of planning sustainability will they they may take the whole thing and send it to planning board. They may want to eat, they may email me and say, you're willing to meet because we would like to kind of negotiate or we'd like to talk about the changes that you have suggested here. Why did you do this? Why did you do that? Are you willing to, you know, increase the threshold from 12 to 18, you know, where the thus I would come back and we would meet and have a discussion about it. Um, but I, 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 George specifically asked for a copy, so I'm going to send it to him. And then I'm we'll, we'll probably end up having a dialogue with um, the Office of Planning Sustainability and George at some point. Yes. Oh, so is it not the city council that votes on it? It's, no, the, the city. So the way that this would work when you make an ordinance change is a whole huge process. To go uh, public hearings. And right. all, it's OK. You don't need to go into it all. But so it's a long it's a long haul, but it would get there. Yeah, um, I see. OK, so. All right. OK. Yep. All right. All right, we 537. Let's see what we can fly through on our agenda. Anyone else? Any other comments? I don't have much to do. I don't have anything to say really about the spotted lantern fly, so we can skip that again. Okay. All right. Um, okay, so two two things. Um our re, a replacement commissioner for Maryland. And I even hate saying that. However, um I did meet um I did meet with uh, Christina uh, Peterson, who was interested, who was interested in being on the commission in the, previously. Um, she is still mulling it over, and I haven't really got back to. She, she and I have not connected again. Hmm. And I was, I wasn't sure if any any other commissioners have reached out to anyone, or anyone has reached out to them. Okay. Um, all right. So I will follow up with her uh probably next ne next week i think the one the one thing that i think that she did express was that it the two month of meeting the two meetings per month would be difficult for her mm. which is understandable i mean all of us have the original folks that are on the commission obviously have been two and even when i wasn't on the commission i was a tree warden it was twice a month so it's kind of like in our system um and uh we meet just as much as the city council does. So that's kind of says a lot. So I think that was one difficulty um, that she had, but I think she's, she's, very, she's interested, but I think she's questioning what her, how her role would be, et cetera. So I think she mm -hmm. wanted to think about it. 
but I did meet with her. She came to my office. So if you have anyone that's interested, please have them get a hold of me so we can uh, at least put their name in the ring. I don't know which um, members of this commission have worked with Christina, but um, she strikes me as having a tremendous work ethic, a lot of expertise, a lot of experience. Mm -hmm. um, she worked for government. Um, she, I think she brings a lot to this, having been, um, you know, working in her position in for mass wildlife. Yeah, I would agree to that, Sue, knowing her through Kestrel Land Trust. And, um, uh, and for a while, she was sitting in on our meetings quite faithfully, um, just as an interested uh, citizen and volunteer. Yeah, she still, she still receives our agenda every month, twice a month. So she is up to date with actually what we're working on. Um, but she's in our email pool and I never took her out of it. Um, but she can also view it on the city's website as well. All right, so no no really new. Thank you, Sue, for that. I, I, I agree with you. She's been really, she's a, she's a person that can, can get things done uh, and she yeah. has a depth of knowledge that is incredible. But I'm certainly not closed off to if somebody, you know, has other people. Yep. Yep. as well by all means don't yep. be still shut down in any way by what i said i just want to make sure that for anybody who never yeah. encountered her really that there's a lot of good reasons yep yeah th this this kind of plays into the uh, there is a uh, the city council commissioned a committee to review why um residents struggle to um fill vacancies on public boards and commissions so city council is uh, going to be reaching out uh, probably to existing commissioners or existing chairs of commissions to talk about um, the lack of or the difficulty of individuals being able to serve on um, commissions like ours and others because there's a lot of there's quite a few vacancies throughout other commissions throughout the city. Um, and one would think that being on Zoom actually would make serving on a commission easier. Yeah because you can pretty much zoom in from anywhere versus being in person. I mean, that's the one advantage I like about this. I, I dislike the distance we have, but I do like the ability for us to be um, in a place where, you know, like I'm in my office where I have access to everything. I have access to all the documents we work right. on. You know, if, if we go to a, a meeting room, then I have to drag all those documents with me. Um, we have to make sure there's Wi-Fi. And we have to make sure that it's recorded. So. Um, but anyways, that's another topic, but. Well, I find, I'll speak up and say, you know, being on Zoom is an advantage. I usually work till five o'clock for the 4.30 meeting with Zoom. I just switch to the meeting at 4.30. I miss half an hour work versus when I had to drive from Springfield. Right, right. I was missing a lot more of the day. It was more disruptive. So I would advocate for, you know, that it might be easier to get people with the Zoom, if they're working people. Well, let's save that for the topic of um, meeting times. And maybe we should wait on that until we know who our replacement person is gonna be. Yeah, the, the that's a good suggestion, Molly, and we can roll right into that. The reason I put that on there is because I was, wanted to entertain uh, the commission's thought, the commissioner's thoughts about just meeting once a month during the upcoming summer meetings. Yeah. So June, July, and August, um, and then return to our regular um, uh, bi-monthly meetings in September. Yeah, I, I think that's a reasonable thing. We, you know, we've had a tough time getting a quorum sometimes in the summer, and then you have to like mess around with getting the minutes in time. And so I think we should just set you know, try to get once a month, I told it in the summer. The only thing is um, we have to make sure it's the once a month when people can actually come. Right. <laughs> right. So the only way to, the only way that I could do that is I could send you an email and ask you, you know, yeah. meeting, what meeting mm -hmm. day 
first or th first or third Wednesday of this month. Can you? Mm -hmm. I'll probably I'll try to send that tomorrow or later tonight. Yeah. You can tell me what meetings you can make, and then we can schedule them going forward. Okay. Um, and then of course I you know I've given a lot of thought in both sides of the aisle in essence of just going to one meeting a month versus two meetings a month and and i know for myself like i have it it's in my system that we have two meetings a month they're a set time and i what i do like though is i do like meeting twice a month but i also like to have the flexibility for example for the month of april mm -hmm. where you know it's planting month so we just go to one meeting and if everyone agrees to it that works out. So then we continue on with our two meetings a month, but we're flexible. Yeah. It's sort of like the city council does the summertime where they just meet once a month. Mm -hmm. Basically, it's usually for the month of July and August. Mm -hmm. They usually meet twice in June because they have to adopt the city budget. Um, but I think that would that would be good for us to go back um, just to one uh, meeting a month for the summer at least and then we can revisit this in september and just have a regular schedule and maybe i, by thought, then, maybe I imagine then. each meeting requires a pretty significant amount of staff time mm -hmm. yeah I mean, yep. that's city resources we have to think about too well I, I like i like the idea of other than summer to continue meeting every other week because i feel like it keeps the momentum going I think if we went to once a month, uh, things would just slow down a lot. We wouldn't get as much done. That's true. Yeah, I mean, given the fact of the parameters of working, um, you know, in op during open meeting time really is law. You know, it's kind of hard. We can't work outside of open meeting. Right. So I, I think twice a month has benefited us over the long haul. I think it's been a stretch for some folks, and I understand that. And I and I re totally, I respect all of you, present commissioners and previous commissioners that have served because it's taken a lot of time out of your personal lives, your work time. I mean, I'm here, I work here. Um, Deb, um, thank you, I know, but Deb also works here, so it's um, it's an extension of what we're doing, where you folks are just like shifting, like 180 or 360 sometimes to make these meetings. So I I I appreciate that and. I don't think we would be as far as we are today if we didn't have that dedication. So, um, all right. So um, I would probably ought to have a motion on the books to say that we're only gonna meet once a month for the next three months. So if someone would make a motion um, that we, we are only gonna have one meeting in the month of June, July, and August. I can do that. Okay. Uh, I move that we vote to convene one meeting of the Urban Forestry Commission during June, July, and August. Dates to be set in the future. One meeting per month. Per month, yeah, sorry, of June, July, and August, yeah. Okay. Deb, did you get that? Did. Okay. Thank great. you. Thank, Thank you, you, Deb. So uh, is anybody going to second it? Yes, we need a second. Do I have a volunteer? I just need an arm. Here, Rob folks, so I second it. Okay, all right. We have a second. Any discussion? No discussion. Uh, all right, uh, Deb, roll call, please. Rich. Aye. Jen. Yes. Molly. Yes. Susan. Yes. David. Yes. Rob. Yes. And Marilyn. Yes. Thank you. Okay, so we have uh, time to spare, um, believe it or not, which is a rarity. Our well, last meeting, our last meeting went to six thirty. I'd like to give like a two sentence up, two sentence update on the tree planting. Please, please. I, I just want people to know that um, it's a, it's a big problem the, the heat, and so we've suspended for now. Um, it's going to be ninety six degrees <sighs> on Saturday. What? So, yeah, so Rich touched on this, just saying that, you know, he wants to start planting earlier and earlier, but it, it's a genuine obstacle to, to reaching our goals. And it's also, I think we're really kind of facing the possibility of, you know, some trees dying because they're just not going to get enough water when it's that hot in the spring. So just want you all to know that that's happening. That's the story. 
that's sad. Uh, I yeah. guess one other thing is that um, uh, just wanted Molly to know that I'm meeting with Christina to work on uh, the maps of what we have and haven't planted. That's oh, good. Uh, she asked you for the the link, which I think yes, she, uh, I gave it to her. Yeah, and I yeah. think I think yeah. I sent it to you too. Yeah, yeah. So we it's, have the link. And, it's the and, same and I, document that's on our folder on yeah. Google Drive. Yeah, I've just asked her to. Um, be the discipline that sees it get done, that it gets done. And she's volunteering great. to do that as opposed yeah. to me being the discipline. So yeah, great. You know that's happening. So the, the whole downtown thing we are working on. All right. Um, All right, that's it. I have a little update. Let's see. As far as the Atlantis surveys, is there anybody here who's interested in still in doing any more of those with me at some point? Like, I could do some. Um, after the end of June. Okay. I could do some towards the end of June, probably. And I, I can just get in touch with you. I'd be happy to, to do okay. that. Um, and I, is it still useful? I was gonna do this, but I haven't gotten around to it yet. When I did the planting site surveys, um, there were records where I didn't put down whether it was on a sidewalk side of the street or the other side of the street. And I was gonna go back and look at the maps, you know, look the aerial photos and mark if it was sidewalk or not sidewalk is that still something that's useful or not i don't want to do, well, I mean, do it if well, it's not useful because it'll take i time. don't think you have to do it in that um christine and i will actually go to each location and yeah okay and and, and we'll comment on them there, there'll be three comments it already got planted yeah we wanted okay. to plant okay there, but we couldn't plant there for whatever yeah. reason or we just haven't gotten to it so when does that process happen or do you visit the sites well, Christine is driving this, you know, she's going to make sure it gets done. I just asked her to. Oh, that's connected to what you were just saying. Yeah. Oh, oh, I thought you were talking about the, um, oh, wait, maybe I sent her the wrong thing. I thought what she wanted me to send was the list of all the trees that had been planted over the many years, or did she want the planting sites? Yes. So she wanted the, the maps that you have made. Oh, that's. Not what I heard. Okay. Okay. But I this, misunderstood. Yeah. So what what we're going to do is, um, you know, probably all those sites. Well, some of them have actually been planted. Mm -hmm. Some of them we've wanted to plant, but we're not going to. Going. I'll just give you an example. Behind City Hall, we wanted to plant there. There's a space, but then maybe they're going to build a building there. So yeah, yeah, yeah. I know. There's things that have changed. Yeah. yeah so we'll just put a note, like what happened. Like did it got yeah. planted? We couldn't okay. plant it because, or we just haven't gotten to it and maybe we could plant it. All right. I will send her the um, the maps as well as the um, um, lists. Right, the maps are really the important thing because we'll actually rewalk a lot of it. Yeah. And then write down what the status is. And you know what, she probably has, oh no, they're not GPS, that's right. It's just maps where you go in front of the house and it has the address of the house, yeah. Yeah, and then we'll okay. just try and note the status of what's happening. Great. Okay. Super. Also, we've picked up some other sites in the downtown mm -hmm. that we are planning to plant or could plant. So we'll probably note that down too. Okay. And if we have, Rob, could you say some of those sites? I think people would might find it interesting. So some of the potential sites. Well, yeah. 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 So it's very exciting and very maybe very disappointing, but. I've been working with um, the old school commons for a couple of months. Right. That's that's the corner of New mm -hmm. New South, I believe, or, and um, across from the academy. Yeah, across from the academy, and, and, and we have oh about eleven trees that might go in there. That will be a big thing for downtown. Um, the there's a, some very enthusiastic board members. We've staked it all out. We've made a tree list. We've made a map of it. We've you know. Right. Right. But then just at the last minute, it turned out there are board members who think that we just plant sticks with plastic bags on the bottom and that what's the point? Literally. So I don't know. <laughs> yeah. You don't think that trees grow? Well, they just think, I think they think we should be planting big, beautiful trees to start. Well, they grow. I don't know. Was, there's been objections, <laughs> so it might not happen, but, I'm, oh, no. but Christina and I have been working on it. We're very invested in it. It's taken a zillion emails and drawings and oh. 
there, there was a large lengthy series of emails about native versus non-native. And so there are definitely non-natives there. When you get it, now there are fewer non-natives and more natives, but the, anyway, it's, it's a process. If we get that, that's a huge thing for downtown because that's a lot of big trees. That yeah, that's a primo site. Yeah, and, and, and they can grow large trees. Yeah. So, and Rich already got a couple of trees in there. Uh, there are two that are already planted. Mm -hmm. Elm trees, so very prime, really great. So there's progress, but I guess it, this just points out each site is like a story takes time. So yeah. it only yeah. happened there because I sort of was working on a different site and one of the trustees saw me working there and we started a discussion and the discussion has been going on. Actually, it was last fall that the discussion started. Mm, okay. Now, I've read that if you plant, you know, the smaller the tree is when you plant it, the, it will overtake a larger tree. Oh, yeah. We sent the, the, the big explanation. And, okay. And we sent them yeah. a huge reply about planting small trees and that we're very smart and we're doing great things. And uh, Alicia wrote the letter I gave with me, and it was, yeah. It's, we'll see. I don't know what the result is going to be. Thank you very much. I, I always tell people when they ask why I don't plant larger trees, and I'm like, well, I said, you think about this. I said, you plant a tree that's eight inches in caliper. I said, you, it takes eight years at a minimum for the tree to restore oh. the root systems yeah. left in the field. Mm -hmm. And they're like, what do you mean the root systems are in the field? I'm like, the root system is back <laughs> in the nursery. Yeah. yeah off. So the tree is just basically a lot of structural roots that is just going to sit and spin while it's redeveloping its root mass because yeah. every inch of caliper right. of a BNB tree, it takes however many inches a year. So if it's a one inch tree, it takes a year to restore their fibrous root system that was left behind. Oh. Um, not to mention the fact that they are extremely costly. Right. So this is all written up by Cornell has a thing about, right? That's yes. for your quoting. Yes. So, so anyway, they were just insulting one member of the board didn't want the trees, but hopefully something good will come out of it. Um, Rich, I have, I have one short question. Sure. You mentioned last time about um, that site in front of Florence Dental. Um, yes. Oh, what, yeah. Whatever happened with that? Uh, we are, we are, I did a site walk with uh, the contractor and Wayne and Lucy from Berkshire Design, and we're moving forward with planting a tree there. Great. So, in that big space where there's actually right now a big grassy area? No, Florence Dental is uh, next to Cooper's Corner. It's on that yes. side. Yeah, there's yeah no grassy but it's area. right next to the gas station. Yeah. yeah, there's no grassy area there, though. It's all blacktop. Oh. So mm -hmm. we, are, we are taking one parking space away to make a tree, tree well with CU soil in it. There's a grassy area between Florence Dental and the gas station, though. Do you know the place I'm talking about? I have to, uh, I have to drive. Well, right. Next time you drive by, you can see. Okay. You'll see. Anyway. Yeah. So we're that project is moving forward. I don't know when the contract is going to start, but that was the project where they're going to be replacing uh, tree pits on on uh, Main Street in Florence with uh, a, a a smaller volume of sea soil. Uh -huh. um, and we're going to, we are going to, plant. we're going to end up planting the trees. They're just putting the sea of soil in there. We're coming back and planting them. Great. Great. That, that will be Yay. potentially a fall project along with Warfield Place. I, I need, still need to reach out to the mm -hmm. residents. So. Rich, spe speaking of Warfield Place, I noticed that somebody's planted some little trees along that, that area. Where? Uh -oh. Warfield Place, um, oh. where, there's no, where there's no sidewalk on the the yeah. dog leg going out to prospect. Oh yeah. yeah. There's yeah. little trees in there now. Yeah, that gentleman has planted trees there. I don't know. I don't know. I don't know who he is. He's planted, but the problem is we can't really plant too many large trees there because the fact that his house is so close to the road. So I'm okay. I'm okay. I'm okay. I, I'll go look. I haven't been down there. I need well, to. well, we could plant tall and narrow trees, which we have a whole selection of, you know. <laughs> this is true. And we could, yeah, we can, yes. But I that's yeah. a lot of leaves. So I need to reach out to the re I need to reach out to the residents. Yeah. Um, and come up with a 
a planting plan. So I may uh, need a, another commissioner to go with me when I go to do this. Right. I will be in touch. So I'm probably gonna I'm probably gonna put letters on people's doors. So just having I'm just Warner Brothers is not finished the construction project. So they are yeah. they are I waiting for them to mobilize. Yeah. Up to the end of June. Um, the other thing too is one we have one minute. Tree City USA event is in Acton, Mass, on the eighth of Wednesday, on the eighth of June, which is a Wednesday. So I have two tickets. Um, I'm going to go, and I would actually like to have one of the staff members that works with me doing the tree plantings attend. Mm. There is the potential; they, they have a limited amount of tickets because of the location. There is possible, possibly, there might be other tickets available. So if anyone is interested in going, let me know and I can work with Julie Coop to get a couple extra tickets. It's just going to be basically a presentation, um, a bite to eat, and then it's over at two, it's nine to nine to two. Sorry, I can't. Yeah, it's, yeah. it's not a really, it's not a most opportune time. It's during the work day. So. Yeah, I cannot do that day either. Okay. All right. Um, that's all. It's the only other thing I have. Maybe Marilyn, any chance you'd like to do that? It's yeah, I've always enjoyed going to those. And they've been canceled the past couple of years. What day did you say? June eighth. June eighth. Yeah. Uh, nine to what time? Nine to two. Yeah. Let me just check my work schedule. I'll I'll put it on my calendar and get back to you. Okay. The other, one other thing. I hope we're right on time. Almost a little over. One other thing is I want to get a picture of all of us, all the commissioners with the mayor. So I'm gonna to try to, because we don't meet in person any longer in city hall, that was easy peasy with Mayor Narkowitz. Um, but I wanna to try to work bef before Maryland's term is over, I'd like to get a picture of all of, all of us with uh, uh, GL. So I will try to arrange that somehow with court, but the mayor and I are easy, we're here every day it's going to be getting all of you together at, mm -hmm. at the same time. Although I suppose we could do Photoshop, right? <laughs> we could do it. Could we do it with the tree city USA flag? Yeah, I think that would be, that would be fun. So let me, let me work on that uh, as well. Okay. All Great right? idea. That's really nice. That would be really nice. Okay. We, we need to, we need to update our photos uh, in the PowerPoint. Well, I need to update the, mm. some of the photos in the PowerPoint presentation, but I have a, a plethora of photos of all of us. Oh, um, different things, planting, et cetera. So I, right, I think right. them, action photos. Yeah, they're, they're good actually, because it's really a great talking piece when you're trying to, and it's what I did with um, the Rotary Club when I went and gave the presentation, I mm. took a whole bunch of pictures that they provided and put them um, in a section called partnering with new community volunteers, you know, so that great. was helpful. Okay, anyone else right. have anything else before we adjourn the meeting all right i move that we adjourn the meeting i second uh no roll call needed any discussion all in favor just raise your hand excellent thank you i will be in touch via email about our next meeting um and uh, we can go from there